Well, hello and welcome to the Christian Leaders News. We're here in February and we have lots of exciting things. We sure do. But as always, we are going to start off with the degree program graduates um, for this past month. And I was super pleased to see that uh, we are doing the news a little bit later in the month, but there were even more graduates than in January. So a huge congratulations to each of those names on the screen and a job well done. Praise God. Well, and on exciting news, some of you may have seen, we've shared on some of our social medias, but we um, had a huge uh, momentum moment in this month in February. So I actually got to be a part of going before the COA. So this is the commission that would make the decision about if we would be granted candidate status. So we have been, have, we've had applicant status and we've explained what that is in the past. And this was the huge, like kind of middle milestone of accreditation and um, we we were praise the Lord granted candidate status um, on February 13th and you know I, I just want to thank all of you guys I know how much the students each of you have been praying for this and just that was so felt by our team and so um, just I want to express so much gratitude for the love and support that you as our student body has given to us the staff and board as we've been pursuing this USDE accreditation. So let's talk a little bit about what this means, Abby, because it's kind of yes. a lot of terms, a lot of different words. And as we yes. know, it, it has been a long journey. So you'll see this like kind of first statement on our website on the accreditation page. Candidate status is a pre-accreditation status granted to those institutions that meet the ABHE conditions of eligibility and that possess such qualities as may provide a basis for achieving accreditation status within five years. So that's a question we've kind of been getting a lot. You know, what does the timeline look like for right. this? Does this, does this it mean? mean it will be accelerated mm -hmm. yeah. or slower? So roughly a five-year kind of timeline right. is what is provided. It could be faster, it could be slower, but that's right. kind of the rough rough outline. Well, and it's it's kind of exciting because before when we were at CAN or applicant status, we were like five-year basis to getting candidate status. So we had started in 2019 and now here we are in 2024. So we achieved the kind of five-year timeline of that. And so that was so exciting, such a blessing. But now to know that now this five years means actual getting to the spot of accreditation. So just knowing that, that we're that much closer, I think is huge. But we also had um, an ABG representative who's been supporting us along the journey kind of explain a little more about what candidate status means. And so to put it kind of in my words, it brings more credibility for our degree programs. So like in regards to another note on there is like our partner schools, like knowing we're candidate status versus applicant status is a pretty big deal for uh, understanding of an organization, a school. Um, they know that if you've made it to actually candidate status that is one of the hardest parts on the whole journey and that's another note on here is that was such an encouragement to us is that receiving candidate status is typically the hardest part for an institution to achieve so mm -hmm. being at candidate status is huge it also will mean that we be listed on the u.s department of education directory um, we're not there yet they need to still send the note and some of those finishing processes but that should be happening in the next month and so that's pretty exciting and especially internationally the aba representative was telling us that internationally in countries they'll typically just check and look and see if you're on that list and they don't even really look at the nuance of like candidate versus having accreditation so I thought that was really encouraging we have so many international students so that's a huge deal and then um, some of our states also said candidate status there's a couple of states where you guys know we have um, we don't have authorization to offer our degree because we don't have accreditation or cost prohibitive or something like that um, but some states do recognize candidate candidate status as grounds for offering the degree. So we're excited that we're going to be able to reach out to all the states and let them know that we now have candidate status. Um, and that's going to help in that journey a lot. Absolutely. Some some very exciting points there. And also, you know, if you're maybe pursuing a school that we aren't officially partnered with, that isn't on our partner page, um, mm -hmm. the candidacy status can hold some weight for your associate or bachelor's degree as well. That could change how that was dealt with before. And speaking of um, partner schools, we, do, yes. we have a very, very exciting new partnership to announce with Grace Christian University. So their their team has been just absolutely wonderful to work with. And Such we're extra excited because they're located right near um, our office here in yes, Grand Rapids. Yes, we are neighbors. Yeah, <laughs> so go West Michigan. So um, Grace Christian offers um, both bachelor and master's degrees um, that can be completed through a flexible online learning environment. They do have an in-person campus as well. Um, 
Um, but it's very exciting that they have some, you know, flexible learning plans um, to go with that. Um, their courses are focused on Bible ministry and leadership um, to empower students to reflect Christ in all aspects of their lives. So they are currently making a special offer for CLI associate alums in particular. Um, when you start your first class um, before May of 2024, um, there will be no tuition or fees um, for that first course for those first credits. So that's a really incredible deal. Yeah. Oh, and unprecedented. Great, yes, <laughs> unprecedented for them to make that offer, mm -hmm. but also that isn't an offer we've received from any other partners. Absolutely. So yes, yeah, seriously, if you've been considering some of the partner schools, put Grace Christian on the top of your list mm -hmm. of places to look at. And with the special offer, especially, you know, now might be the perfect time to act. Absolutely. So um, they're asking for the application and your any documents they need to be received by May 10th. So there's a little bit of time um, to get everything in line, but you can visit um, that link right on the screen there. Um, and they this link is also right on our partners page on our website if you're struggling to um, access it. Um, and then overall, um, they are also, um, with this new advent of our candidacy status, um, our bachelor alums will also be eligible to go through their proce process of admissions into master's degrees. So if that is also something you're considering, be sure to look at you know what master's degrees they offer and mm -hmm. if that is a fit. Because for any CLI student, um, regardless of this initial kind of free course, they will be providing a 20% um, discount to any program, undergraduate or graduate. Right. So absolutely a generous off mm -hmm. offer. And again, something that we have not had from other partners. So this is a huge opportunity for um, our alums to transfer and maybe pursue a bachelor or a master's with Grace Christian University. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions, you know, about anything on our end, feel free to reach out to us. We can um, answer those for you or get connected with the appropriate team member at Grace. And if you have any questions about their um, programs, you can just visit their website. I know they have a live chat feature and lot, lots of assistance available. So just absolutely um, reach out. So we have great news. My sister Anne gave birth. So this is my newest nephew. Um, his name is Eden, but there is a picture of the little sweetie. So <laughs> Anne is now on maternity leave. So please bear that in mind that our financial director in HR is on maternity. But a huge congratulations to her family. And he is an absolute cutie. So fun to have him and Micah so close in age. I just yes. love that. And we also wanted to leave a quick reminder to stay engaged on the network. Um, you know, as it is kind of the start of 2024, we have some exciting new offerings on there, like new Bible studies and reading plans. Um, Rudy has put together that one year Bible reading plan. Mm -hmm. Now is a great time to start, but you can start that anytime, which is really nice. And then he also has put together some daily blessings from Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, and Psalms. And then there also are those enrichments running. Running, um, all the time on Wednesdays and Fridays, um, Peace Smart and Apologetics. And those are just kind of some helpful tidbits from yeah. those courses kind of sprinkled, um, you know, throughout the network to just be encouraging to kind of give you yeah, just a bite size little thing to dive into. And then for this month's discussion, um, we want you to reflect on what it means to live out your faith authentically in your workplace. And so, you know, thinking about what are the opportunities that your work environment presents for expressing your faith? How can you be showing the fruits of the spirit in your actions, your decisions, your interactions with your colleagues? Um, so ask yourself the question and share with us the answer of how you feel there's more ways that you can fully embody these qualities and how you can make your faith more visible through your professionalism, your integrity and compassion and any other ways that you've really particularly been sharing your faith in your workplace. We want to hear about it. Yeah, I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say. We've been kind of having this discussion um, in our Spanish monthly meetings. We're doing like a year-long series on this topic about faith in the I workplace, that, yeah. ministry in the workplace. Um, so I'm excited to dive into that. And I think it's cool because so many of our students do work in ministry. So mm -hmm. many work in um, fields other than ministry right. or, you know, will eventually. So I think it's cool to just consider this question. Yeah, um, yeah so we're excited to hear what you guys have to say. All right, Abby, <clears throat> this one is yours that you put. All right, here we go. What do you call a group of musical whales? Mm. <laughs> I feel like whales are kind of musical in their own right. They kind of like With the blowhorn? Yeah, yeah, like, I'm they... picture like a blowhorn like, or something. <laughs> uh, or that's the blowhorn. <laughs> <laughs> An orchestra. <laughs> oh, that's a good, good one. <laughs> 
We want to end today with our encouragement as um, a missional vision. You know, we did share an email about this, but we want to now share it here in our news with everybody. Craig Vanderlindy, who's been working with us and is an incredible videographer, um, put together this missional video just kind of featuring the mission of what Christian Leaders has been about and, and some of the impact that the students are having. So we want to share that as our closing encouragement for February. In Romans 15, the Apostle Paul said that his sole ambition was to preach Christ where he was not known. My sole ambition is to raise up ministers to preach Christ where he is not known. I was dreaming and I saw people as far as my eye could see and somebody walked up to me and said, make those ministers, they're the ones, train them. Woke up and he said, wow, I had the most amazing dream. I was pregnant and we had a five-year-old and a two-year-old. While we were in Colorado, a neighbor came up to me as I was shooting baskets um, and he tried to get me into Amway. So we, we were fairly young ourselves in the ministry at that point, but we, we thought, well, Lord, if the Lord gives us a call, he will equip us and uh, show us when the time is for it, so. But I thought to myself, I want to see how we, ordinary people can reproduce the faith like this Amway distributor tried to get me into Amway. He is one that is willing to try things and willing to change and also most of all willing to follow what God is calling him to do. I sent a fax to Amway Corporate Headquarters asking Rich DeVos if he would mentor me in making disciples and having reproducible disciples to share the gospel everywhere in the world. And that if Rich said yes, that would be a confirmation that this was the direction Henry should go. And within a day, his executive secretary said, Mr. DeVos is willing to mentor you and, um, and help you figure out how to get more people to reproduce their faith. That started a mentorship, it was 1993. Rich DeVos was 68 years old. I was 32 years old. So I was on a mission with the Bible League to go to Manhattan, New York. It was September 10th, 2001. The next day was September 11th. And as I was seeing the burning buildings, the intensity of the Holy Spirit said, it's time to get serious about mobilizing and multiplying ministers. The internet it was just coming to a place where we could offer online training. This online training could be scalable and free. The education space is one that's not traditionally filled with innovation, but I think younger people desire to see a change in the options that they have presented before them. Where do the downtrodden or the people that live paycheck to paycheck, right. where do they get an education? Right. Yeah. So I called up Rich DeVos and I said, Rich, that one piece the ministry training piece, that has to be available. And it's gonna be the internet. And Rich said, what do you know about the internet, Henry? I said, I don't know anything, but I will learn. I see the value in a, in a growing, challenging ministry and a willingness to do new things and try new things. So I saw that in you, a willingness to do things differently. And so, um, I, I, I've always, my wife and I, we've always had a passion for education and for scholarships. When I met you, um, it looked like the ability to really leverage donations uh, differently. Instead of gifting to something that was static and only did one thing, I saw in CLI that you were 
trying to reach people for Christ in lots of different ways. So we launched Christian Leaders Institute in 2006. Six students. But the next year was 26. Then 120 students. And by 2011, it was 1,000 students. And things were multiplying. Since 2012, 11 years further, we have surpassed 600,000. Now, the story is what God can do. We put this training out there. The training is free. A lot of my peers have tons and tons of college debt that's been extremely debilitating to start their life, whether they're faced with buying a home or starting a family. Having that debt can be so crippling, and I think that most of us kind of feel that tug that there has to be a, a better way to do this. I, I do see the future of education cost being reduced for everyone. It's a story of multiplication, but with this nuance, it has to be free. It has to be donor generated. So that it's accessible no matter where somebody's coming from. Maybe they've come from addiction, they've come from broken marriages, um, death, divorce, whatever it is, but God shows up and changes their life. And most of all, he places a calling in their heart. special education and I had a first grade level. I was a drug dealer in my hometown. Uh, I was also a user. I have three older brothers and a younger sister and we all grew up in a trailer. Um, very, very, very poor with a single mom um, who was also a meth addict for most of my younger years. The pastor said, Jim, you're almost 40, you have a family, you have a career, your ministry days are really behind you. And uh, you can't uproot your family and go to seminary. You can't uproot your family and go uh, to college at this point. When I was 18 years old, I went to Tampa for a weekend and I wind up being trafficked. Once I was able to escape that, I came home and was introduced to crack cocaine. Uh, getting out of high school, I was looking at the tuition rates and I just remember feeling this this feeling of kind of dread. It was everyone at the church was saying this is what you got to do. Uh, it was the expectation, you know, you got to go to school, you got to go into debt. That's just what everybody does. I had no job, I had no education, I had no money, I had no home and I had four kids. Come from a foster home. There's 25 of us all together. There was absolutely no way to pay for, pay for school. I ended up homeless. I did some research and I found this little school called Christian Leaders Institute. And um, like, what you know, those, it's too good to be true. Well, you think that when you hear free education, free college education, like it can't possibly be true, but I'll check it out. I liked what I saw. I loved the classes. I saw chaplaincy and it was all over for me because it's exactly what I was looking for. I found out then was that I could actually take courses um, while I was still working. And so I had a really good career in business. And so I would work all day long, come home, spend time with my family. And then when they would go to bed, I would spend an hour or two doing some studies each night. Minister Ray came into the, the ministry with a calling. That caller was to speak and preach God's word to a population that he, was, he had been involved with. I just remember my eyes lighting up because it's, hey, here's another route that nobody has told me about. Uh, I didn't even know it existed. And it completely aligns with what my calling is. My name is Reginald Grigsby. I'm a member of Christian Leadership Institute. My name is Amanda Chavez, and I am a student at CLI. I am also an ordained minister through their Christian Leaders Alliance. I would not take my journey back, ever. 
now I can go back to those very same streets. And everybody know, that's Miss Leslie. I can go places and speak to people and say things and help them to see the better in themselves. It's through the development of effective leadership that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ effectively. Hi, I'm Leslie Harrell. I'm a student with Christian Leaders Institute. Our youngest daughter, Abby, was an excellent student in high school. Uh, wanted to study at Christian Leaders Institute. She could have gone anywhere. I could not be more grateful for the journey of also being a student of Christian Leaders. Um, and then taking that degree and continuing with one of our partner schools to get the dual masters. I was pleased when Abby's bachelor degree with Christian Leaders Institute was accepted at Ohio Christian University and she could go and study there to get her double masters in ministry and business. Training is free. In, the word, in other words, there are no barriers to multiplication. If someone is called in the ministry, they can check this out. If someone senses that they have something to do for the Lord, we will help them get trained. Our goal is to raise up operatives of hope. To raise up more operatives of hope that the gospel is proclaimed everywhere. Are you called to support those called into ministry? We will multiply your impact. Are you called into ministry? We will train you.